I show you this photo, could you guess what my mom picked to dress me as without my knowledge? A cat, a rat, a squirrel? Nope, I was a gremlin. Maybe you don't know what a gremlin is, and that's okay, because it's actually a movie that was released 40 years ago. So maybe back then, I didn't know what a gremlin was either. Some of you might think that a gremlin is a cute creature, but in reality, a gremlin converts into this monster if it touches water. So to be honest, I have no idea what my mom was thinking when she dressed me up as a gremlin and she made me pose next to a pineapple and a watermelon. <laughs> so, growing up, my mom dressed me up as many different things. I'm not sure about this costume, but I'll tell you more about them later. A year ago, I was standing on this same stage, sharing what I called my secret sauce to happiness. Throughout the past year, I went through many, many different changes. And even though it might sound very cliche to some of you, I lost myself. I basically forgot who I was and I found myself in a very dark and sad period of my life. I realized I wasn't following my secret sauce to happiness at all. I basically went through what my therapist called an identity crisis. And I wish I knew there was such a thing before. That's why today I want to share my experience of how did I end up there and how did I manage to get myself out of there too. Because I realized the more I talk about this topic with people, um, I realize how common it is, but how little we actually talk about it. It sometimes seems like we know who we are, but it's not that easy. I always tell my university students, it's okay to not know what you want, but you need to be very, very clear about the things that you do not want. For example, I know I don't want to be working at an office Monday to Friday because I hate routines. I know I don't want to accumulate a lot of material things. I know that um, I prefer iced coffee rather than hot coffee or dark chocolate instead of white chocolate. It's only like this, experimenting many things in life, that we can be more conscious about the things that we want and the things that we don't want. So how can we know what we don't want besides experimenting? When my therapist told me I was going through an identity crisis, the first thing she asked me to do was to do some research on what identity means. So here are some meanings that I found useful. Identity is the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. Identity, the distinguishing character or personality of an individual. Identity, how we define ourselves or how we think others see us. So, social identity uh, groups are usually defined by physical, social, and mental characteristics of individuals. So you can think about it as gender, race, ethnicity, social class, sexual orientation, religious beliefs. So in other words, identity is how we define ourselves or maybe how we think people define us or maybe a combination of both of us, both of those things. So you might be wondering, can identity change? How do we shape our identity? Who defines our identity? I'll ask you one simple question and I'll give you five seconds to think about it in your head. Who are you? Some of you might have stopped and said, oh, I am, and then maybe your name. Some of you probably said, oh, I am a student, I'm a teacher, I'm a boss, I'm a mom, I'm a husband. All these titles that we give ourselves are basically attached to our identity. Identity is formed by the decisions we take and the ones we avoid. How we see ourselves in the world and how we choose to engage with our environment. Your identity can have layers and layers combined with your personality, your thoughts, your values. And as we grow older, we continue to develop our identity by re-evaluating our potential and also realigning our sense of purpose in this world. But there are moments where you feel like your identity does not really match with your actions or your surroundings. And that's how we get lost. And that's exactly what happened to me. 
Growing up, I was an extremely happy little girl. My mom raised me and my brother thinking we could be anything we wanted. Last year, I managed to spend five months back home. This is the longest period I've spent back home um, since I left my country nine years ago. So there was one afternoon that we were looking at old photos with my mom and I found a bunch of photos of me dressed up as anything that you can imagine. I could be a chicken, I could be a princess, I could be a firefighter, I could be a fairy, a ballerina, a butterfly, Mulan, my favorite princess. You get the idea. I really believed I could be whoever I wanted to be. One of my best childhood memories was playing to be spies with my little brother. We had all the equipment to be spies, and I personally, truly believed I was a professional spy. We would spy our neighbors, we would spy everybody. Um, on the other side, my brother, he really, really believed he was Batman. There was one time that we went out of the house and we were walking on the street and this lady looked at my little brother and she said, oh, look at that cute boy dressed up as Batman. And my brother turned around, looked at the lady and said, I am Batman. So that's what I mean with the confidence we have when we're kids that we could just be whoever we want to be. But last year, I found myself in a place where I doubted myself so much, and I started listening and caring too much about what others would think about me. Some people were very mean and said very hurtful stuff to me. And guess what? I believed them. When I saw these photos, I remember how when we were kids, we're just so free to do whatever we want to be and do it. No question, no doubt. I've been tutoring a little girl called Janice for the past two years. She's now seven years old, but when I met her, she couldn't speak any English. She was very shy. Now, she doesn't stop talking. Um, there was one day that we were reading a book and the word embarrassment came up. So she asked me, what does embarrassment mean? So the, the quickest answer was, well, I'll just translate it to Chinese. So I said, Ganga. And then she was like super confused. So I was like, okay, I'll give you an example. Imagine you were in your classroom and all of a sudden you fart. And then everyone knows that you farted. How would you feel? And then she quickly answered, I would think it's so funny and I would just laugh so hard. So I was like, oh my God, it's so hard to explain what embarrassment means. So I was like, okay, I'll give you a second example. Imagine you're jumping rope. All your friends are jumping rope, but you don't know how to jump the rope. And you want to go and try. But then you, when you go and try, you fall down in front of everyone. What would you feel? And she said, well, I think I would just try again and my friends would help me get up. So I asked her, uh, what would you think? Would you be scared of what they were thinking about you? And she just answered, well, Camila, you cannot know what people is thinking about you. It's just part of your imagination. After our tutoring class, something clicked in my head. We are not born knowing what embarrassment means. In fact, society teaches us how to feel embarrassed, when to feel embarrassed, and why to feel embarrassed. And the more we think we can find ourselves in an embarrassing situation, the more we try to avoid it. I tell this story over and over again, and now I call it the Janus philosophy. And every time I'm scared of what people might think about me, I remember that I can't know what will people think about me. It's only part of my imagination. Speaking with kids is almost like therapy to me because it reminds me of how simple life is but how much we complicate ourselves. Going back to identity, how do we end up deciding who we are? I realize we change and sometimes these changes in our lives are so big and they happen so fast that we don't even realize how much we've changed. If I was to introduce myself to you today, it would sound so different from the Camila I was four years ago. 
In 2016, I was on a mission to travel around the world and get to see different countries, do internships, do volunteer work. And then in 2020, I was 23 years old, I was finishing my MBA, and I started my own company. If you see these two photos, we have almost the same pose, right? But our priorities in life were almost the opposite. The beauty of this is that we can always change. We can always decide who we want to be. The problem is that some of us get inside a box and then we forget we can be someone completely different. I read this quote in a book and that's what I mean with a box. If you go to a networking event every day and have to tell people what you do for a living, it's hard to step away from that reduction of who you are. For almost two years, that's all I did. I was so focused in building this little company and I used to introduce myself as the founder and talk about it over and over again. I was 23 years old and most of my friends were five to 10 years older than me. So I started comparing myself, something I've never done before. I was so stressed because I didn't know about half of the things I was doing. And all my peers seems like they knew what they were doing. So there was a point that I burned out and I ran back home, my safe place, and I realized how little I took care of my mental health. I can say I felt like I lost my identity because I was no longer doing the things that made me happy. Instead, I was trying so hard to make others happy. That's why I ask you the question, who are you? And your answer must be aligned with the things that you want to be doing. I know that not everyone is as lucky as me and my brother to have a mom that support us uh, and tell us that we can be whoever we want to be. I know there are some parents that would tell their kids they need to be lawyers or doctors to honor their family. I believe we will go through many identity crises throughout our lives, but we must learn to never let the things in the outside world define our identity. So ask yourself another question. What defines you? Is it your Instagram followers, your job title, the brand of your car, bag, belt, the university you will go to, your scores? All of these things kind of matter. But most importantly, the relationships we have, the jobs we get, and our environment will always slowly change our identity in a positive or a negative way. The most important thing is to be conscious about these changes, to be conscious that we are changing and that we are changing for the same, for the right reasons, let's say. What helped me get out of this loop was to connect with my old friends, the friends that knew me from a very, very like, deep side of me. And I wouldn't have been able to go through this thunderstorm if it wasn't because of my friends and because of my family. Little by little, I found myself again, doing the things I love doing, like swimming, dancing, till sunrise, eating out with my friends, meeting people from all around the world. And I started talking to myself with love in front of the mirror again. You don't need to wear only one hat. You don't need to give yourself only one title and get inside the same box forever. Do not let someone tell you that you can't have it all or that you are doing too much at the same time. Today, my name is Camila Sainz. I'm a daughter, I'm a friend, I'm a sister, I'm a photographer, I'm a startup founder, I'm a university lecturer, I'm a PhD student. Um, I recently started writing for a business magazine and I also finished my first triathlon. I can do all of these things at the same time because I want to be clearer about the things I do not want in my life. The good news is that you can do the same. You can decide to be whoever you want to be. So maybe tomorrow I want to decide to just be a gremlin. Who cares?